What's up everyone, I'm Calamontos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some crazy battles in the Evolution Cup, running three of the highest attack weighted Pokemon available in Haunter, Fracture and Ursaring. Initially I ran a Shadow Ursaring, but the bonus attack didn't really help in any matchups, but the lack of defense certainly hindered it a lot more, so I switched to the regular version eventually, and compared to some of the recent videos I've made, these three Pokemon are actually quite usable, maybe not so easy with them all on the same team but they do have great moves and decent play in this meta. With that being said, let's get into the question of the day. If we were to see an Evolution Cup remix in the future, aside from Vigoroth, which three Pokemon would you ban to help make the meta a lot more balanced? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, we lead into a goal bat, a fairly neutral lead here. Of course, we can hit for super effective damage with the Ice Punch, but the opponent can also threat with a Shadow Ball. I'm going to go straight for that Ice Punch here, and honestly, I think it's very likely that my opponent does just go for a Poison Fang bait, and they do go for the bait, allowing me to reach an Ice Punch. They swap out, and they do catch it onto a Pokemon, and they catch it onto Dragonair, so we land it. We then swap into Fracture, get the farm down, and we've just taken that Dragonair out of the game in a few seconds. They're going to come back in with the Golbat. I think I will shield here, make sure I can get off a charge move, and I will go for the Night Sash here, throwing on alignment. We also get a bit of lag there, which is interesting, but Night Sash is still enough to take out the Golbat. They come in with a Vigor off. They will be able to get the farm down. I really need to grab a shield, and we do grab that final shield. Now, it's going to be very close. They're already at six counters worth of energy, so I'm expecting the most likely play here is that they'll go for 10 and then throw the back-to-back -back body sams so I'm able to catch the first one onto my Haunter and that will guarantee I make it to the close combat in time. They still had to get to two more body sams and close combat takes out the Vigoroth and we take that game. That was also my 100th win with the uh, Go Battle League timed research thingy whatever it's called but yeah into the next battle we see a haunter in the lead very scary mirror match gonna swap into my fracture and we do have an energy advantage so i should be able to grab a shield in this matchup and we do grab the shield and honestly i'm still in range where they're not gonna quite be able to powder snow farm me down before we get to another dragon claw and this should get all shields down on my opponent's end which is absolutely great for me i'm now going to come in with my haunter shadow claws are stabbed so it's going to do more damage than on my Ursaring, so I should be able to shield once, fully farm them down, and a loaded Haunter is so dangerous in this meta. Of course, a Vigoroth will be able to easily tank a Shadow Ball, but we do have that Ice Punch for some nice coverage. First Ice Punch does connect, it does some decent damage, not too much. This is a non-stab charge move. We go for a second Ice Punch, and the opponent is going to have to commit to the Bulldoze here, and that will be taking out the Haunter, but I expect they're so low, they will swap out instantly, which really works out for me because I've got an Ursa Ring. I don't think I would have been able to Shadow Claw farm them down, but now with this Haunter, we easily get the farm down. We make it to another close combat, and close combat, once again, will be taking out the Vigoroth, and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see a Celio in the lead. Now, this is not the most comfortable matchup here. We can't go for those ice punches, but the opponent swaps into their own Haunter. I'm pretty much guaranteed to get a shield here, and then I will swap into my Ursa Ring. Gonna be able to tank an ice punch. They didn't farm to a sludge bomb, so I will tank this fairly comfortably. They're not gonna be able to farm me down or anything like that. Not being able to get to a second charge move either. We come out with quite a lot of energy, and I'm gonna try and farm to the back-to-back -back close combats in time. I know they will make it to a body slam, but I don't wanna debuff my defense just yet. We get to the back to back but they are a second body slam already so i will grab the shield here but i don't really want to commit both shields already so i will let this ursa ring go down and now i'm going to come back in with my haunter and once again it's not the most comfortable match up here i have to commit to the shadow ball but the opponent swaps out into a pokemon that takes super effective damage from the ice punch so now i can land it come in with my fracture they're only at a poison fang so i will let this go through gonna debuff my defense but i'm still healthy enough where they won't be able to powder snow farm me down so i go for the dragon claw and one more dragon tail takes out the celio and we take that game so some interesting swaps there from my opponent it kind of made it a lot easier for me but into the next battle we see a shadow goal in the lead and this opponent doesn't even farm to the shadow ball so i'm thinking 
if they're running ominous wind then fair play that would take me out but they weren't they go for a poison fang bait i'm actually going to swap out because it is a shadow i'm not super confident i would be able to live the wing attacks there and i swap into my fracture the opponent now comes in after debuffing my defense into a vigoroth and the nice thing about haunter up against vigoroth is that we don't need that much hp because we do triple resist the counter damage so I'm now going to wait out my switch squad, come in with the Haunter, and the opponent does throw just before I make it to an Ice Punch. So very nice timing by the opponent. We're going to shield the Body Sand because that would actually take us out from this range. And now we go for an Ice Punch, and this will be taking out the Vigoroth, and the opponent's going to come in with the Golbat once again. I'm going to come in with the Ursa Ring, going to sh no shield the Poison Fang, really hoping I can beat whatever's in the back. It is a Celio, and we don't make it to the back-to-back -back close combats in time because the Powder Snow damage will register and unfortunately we don't get off the second move they're at a charge move here there's no point in shielding they could have just powder snow farm me down but they don't want to take the risk in case they had to take a shadow ball and we do lose that game so ggs to that opponent there into the next battle we see a pilo swine in the lead now this is a bit of tricky pokemon to deal with but i do like to see it in the lead here because obviously we're keeping it away from the fracture and we do outpace them to the charge moves with our haunter so we're going to go for an ice punch and honestly, from this range, I think an Ice Punch might take them out here. So we do have the energy for a Shadow Ball, but we go for the Ice Punch. An Ice Punch barely does take out the Pilot Swine. So that is absolutely massive in this matchup. They're going to come in with a Vigoroth. We will now farm to the Body Sam here. Throw on the CMP tie. And Ice Punch does connect. It is a CMP tie. The opponent does end up throwing the energy. And Body Sam will take out the Haunter. Now I'm going to come in with my Fracture. And I will just commit to one shield. And fully farming down this Vigoroth. They won't make it to back to back Body Sam. So they throw their energy. They swap into a Golbat once again. So we're going to go for a Night Sash. And then we will farm here. Try and catch a move. No, actually, we're just going to go straight for that Dragon Claw. The opponent doesn't want to throw on alignment here. So they don't throw straight away. And now we come in with the Ursa Ring. They have to go for Poison Fangs. Shadow Ball is double resisted. But for some reason, they throw the Shadow Ball anyway. I, I don't know. I don't think it makes any difference here. We do get to the Close Combat. And Close Combat takes out the Vigoroth, and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see another Haunter in the lead. Very scary mirror match. We're going to swap into our Fracture, and the opponent stays in, and they throw on alignment. So I get a full Dragon Tail through, and that makes the farm down very easy up against that Haunter. So the opponent swaps now into a Celio. We go for a Dragon Claw, and the opponent gonna over farm here, looking to get the farm down. But this will now mean that I do grab a shield, and I deal some nice damage. I put them into range where we can probably farm down with the Ursa Ring. So let's see. I'm now going to come in with the Ursa Ring here, and I'm not going to commit a shield. If they go for an Aurora Beam or Water Pulse, that's fine. They do go for it, and they're already at another Body Sam, so I'm thinking I might as well just sacrifice the Ursa Ring here, and Body Sam does take me out. I should now be able to farm them down, but they swap out into their Vigoroth. Now, depending on IVs, they might be able to comfortably tank two Ice Punches here, and it looks like they will be able to. So I go for the second Ice Punch. And we do grab a shield there. I've got to call a bait or let the move go through. We call the bait, but it... I mean, we don't call the bait. Sorry, what am I talking about? <laughs> we don't call the bait. We shield up and it is the bait. So that's unfortunate. A nice punch barely doesn't take them out there. So if I went for one more Shadow Claw and threw on the CMP tie, I would have been able to take out this Vigoroth and we might have been able to take that game there. So GG's to that opponent. Very close game, but I think a slight misplay on my end. And into the next battle, we see a Zwilus in the lead. Gonna swap into my Fracture, go straight for the Dragon Claw. And Dragon Claw does grab an early shield. And at this point, I think I'm just gonna let the Fracture go down. I know that I can come in with my Haunter and I will be able to fully farm them down and come out with potentially two Ice Punches loaded to throw back into that Zwilus if it does come in. So I'm going to let the first move go through. They once again don't even farm to the Shadow Ball. And now they have debuffed my defense, but we do get the farm down. And I'm just going to wait and see what they come in with. And the opponent actually comes in with Haunter. So we go for the Ice Punch here. And Ice Punch does grab a shield anyway. And now we can come in with the Ursa Ring. The opponent stays in for way too long, allowing me to get to the close combat. And close combat will easily take out this wireless. And at this point, we still got two shields remaining. I'm going to be able to take out that Haunter so the opponent does concede the match. And into the next battle, we've actually switched up the team a little bit. I'm running Machoke now in the back. A purified Machoke with the Legacy Cross Chop as 
I did see, or I did start to see a lot more Vigoroth and Zwilus, and sometimes even like a Pylo Swine all on the same team. So whilst Ursaring did have fighting coverage, it just didn't do that well in those matchups. So Machoke gonna do a lot better up against those Pokemon. We're able to take out the Vigoroth in the lead using one shield, but we do have quite a lot of health remaining. So I'm gonna go for the Ice Punch, and now I will swap into my Choke. Uh, into my Machoke, sorry. <laughs> and the opponent comes in with a Shadow Golbat. Gonna go straight for a Poison Fang, debuff my defense as soon as possible. But it's not quite enough damage to prevent me from getting to the return. And does the opponent respect the damage? No, they don't. We one-shot the Shadow Golbat with a fighting type Pokemon with a neutral charge move there. That's insane damage. We're now gonna come in with Fracture. Unfortunately, Fracture is a lot glassier than Zwilus. So even though we did have more health to start off with, they get the farm down, but one Shadow Claw will take them out. The only win con was going straight for that Dark Pulse and me no shielding it, and we didn't do that. So we do win that game. But into the next battle, we see uh, an Alolan Graveler in the lead. We swap into the Fracture. We have two Pokemon that do deal fairly well with it with the fracture being able to resist the electric type damage and then machoke being able to hit for super effective and as well resist the rock type damage but here in this matchup we will be able to flip it although i'm gonna have to use both shields here if the opponent does shield here and they do go for that shield so i'm now going to commit both my shields and i will be able to fully farm them down i'll also come out with a charge move loaded so i'm probably going to throw it straight away the opponent comes in with a goal bat once again so this is actually looking a little bit tricky here because this Golbat will get a very nice farm down. They're now one away from a Shadow Ball. Honestly, I think I just have to sacrifice the Haunter here and I will go and sacrifice it. They're going to go for the Shadow Ball. It will take me out. Going to come in with the Machoke and I kind of need to try and farm them down here. We will resist all of the, uh, the Rock type damage, but Stone Edge still does over half our health, which is certainly not ideal. They make it to a Rock Blast and even resisted. Rock Blast does take out the Machoke and we do lose that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see a Zwilus in the lead. Gonna swap into my Fracture. The opponent responds with a Charm Brion, and uh, because they're not a Fairy type, they're actually going to shield the Dragon Claw there, as honestly, that might have taken them out with that extra dra uh, Dragon Tail. Not really sure, but that's fine. Gonna come in with the Haunter and these resisted non-stab charms are still fairly chunking but i will be able to shield once fully farm them down come out with nearly two ice punches loaded gonna throw one straight away into this wireless and the opponent does use their shield. I'm now going to come in with the Machoke. And here is why we are running Machoke. Because of that, Zwilus and Vigoroth both on the same team. I'm going to shield here the Body Sam. I will farm to nearly 100 energy going for that Cross Chop. And with the Karate Chop damage, that does take out the Vigoroth. And I'm even able to get to a return here up against the Zwilus. And Zwilus does get taken out by the return. And we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Vigoroth in the lead. Fairly neutral lead here. We have to be wary of the Bulldoze. Um, but it's a fairly comfortable matchup if we do correctly shield that Bulldoze. Gonna go for an Ice Punch. The opponent throws too early for a Bulldoze, so I will let this go through. Just gonna be a Body Slam, and even though that's double resisted, and even though the counter damage is triple resisted, they've done pretty much the same amount of damage as us after they get to this second body slam here so we're only narrowly going to win this matchup which is kind of crazy but we do get the farm down unfortunately they farm us down with this wireless I'm gonna come in with my machoke here and I'm gonna shield up i'm gonna over farm a bit and then go for a second cross shop or go for them back to back here so we go for the first cross shop this will grab the first shield the opponent clearly very weak to machoke in the back so i will probably end up trying to catch a move onto my fracture and that's what i do i also get the dragon tail through which is massive as that will do big damage up against the Zwilos, make it a lot easier to farm down in the end game now i'm going to be able to get to a dragon claw before this pile of swine does get the farm down and now they're in range where i can just shield once and farm them down with my karate chop and i will come out of this matchup with a loaded cross shot which we can throw into the Zwilos and Machoke once again will be able to take them out here and take that game. So that's another example there of an opponent having a team triple weak to fighting there. So Machoke really thriving in the current meta. But into the next battle we see a Dusclops and 
Unfortunately, Dusclops is a lot bulkier than this Haunter, but we're going to overfarm massively, go for the Ice Punch here, and we've got the back-to-back -back loaded, so if they do shield once, I'm going to be able to get off this second Ice Punch straight away. The opponent might just let this go through, and they do, and now they're going to come in with their own Haunter. So very, very odd uh, double ghost team so far from the opponent. And once again, they do throw on alignment, so we can get that Dragon Tail through. They're in range where we will easily be able to farm them down. We come in with our Machoke, and we are behind on energy so they will make it to back to back body slams before we can get to the second cross chop but with the karate chop damage we will put them into range where we can easily take them out with our fracture fracture also already has a charge move loaded so i'm going to go for one dragon tail first go for the dragon claw it takes out the vigor off and one more dragon tail easily takes out the haunter and we take that game into the next battle we see another Vigoroth in the lead so once again um, fairly neutral matchup here. The opponent this time does actually farm to the Bulldoze. So I'm going to go straight for that Ice Punch. The opponent lets it go through. And I'm going to call the bait. It is the Bulldoze. And unfortunately, we do go down there. We come in with the Machoke. The opponent responds with Shadow Gold Bat. And I'm going to shield the first charge move. I know it is a Poison Fang. It will debuff me. But I'm going to go for the Night Slash here. Going to throw on good timing rather than over farming. The opponent does let it go through. And I'm able to farm them down with that Dragon Tail. But this opponent will probably be able to fully farm me down with their Vigor off here. They do shield. And yes, they do get that farm down which is unfortunate. I'm now going to shield here, hoping that Machoke can beat whatever is in the back. And it is a Zwilus in the back, so this is going to be very close, but Dragon Breaths are really chunking this Machoke so far. Going to go for that cross chop, grab the final shield, and now I will make it to a second cross chop, but cross chop doesn't do enough damage. And now here is a body slam enough to take us out. No, it's not, but they get the Dragon Breath farm down and they take that game. So GG's very close game there. And into the next battle, we see another Vigoroth in lead. What a surprise. It's the most common Pokemon in this meta, so you will be seeing it quite a lot. Going to go for the Ice Punch. The opponent does respect the damage. And now I'm going to swap into my Fracture. We're behind on energy. I'm going to have to shield. That's why I did stay in initially with my Haunter. And now I get the farm down. Come out with energy loaded. Going to go straight for that Dragon Claw up against the Celio that comes in. And unfortunately, they will farm me down before I get to another charge move. So what we're going to do here, we come in with Armor Choke and we are going to shield the first charge move from the Celio. They go for the Body Slam and I'm just going to force them to throw their Body Slam straight away. And Body Slam does go through. It doesn't do too much damage. We're at the back-to-back -back Cross Chops here, but Cross Chop won't be enough to take them out here. So I'm actually going to swap, catch the Body Slam onto my Haunter. And now I really hope that I'm still going to have enough health to get to a nice punch here. It's going to be so close, but we get there in time. And that is absolutely vital because Ice Punch puts them into range where a Cross Chop will take them out. And we win the CMP tie. So Cross Chop takes out the Vigor off. Can we get the farm down? Yes, we can and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, another Dusclops in the lead. So once again, a bit of an awkward lead matchup here. Of course, an Ice Punch from this range won't take them out, but our Shadow Claws deal absolutely huge damage. The opponent tries to catch a potential ghost type move there. Not really sure. We go for the ice punch. We do connect and now we can come in with the fracture, get the farm down before they make it to a body slam. And now they come in with the vigor off. So we go straight for a dragon claw. Can we make it to two dragon claws in this matchup? No, we barely don't get there. And that's unfortunate, but I'm now going to come in with my Machoke. And honestly, I should really shield the charge move coming from this Vigoroth, as a Body Slam will do a lot more damage than an Ice Punch. So yeah, we do no shield that charge move there. Go straight for the Cross Chop. We take them out. I swap here. And now, honestly, I should just commit to the fast moves because you'll see that we actually get them extremely low with the Shadow Claws there. And they might even be in range for a Karate Chop farm down. So we go for the shield there. They make it to another charge move before we get to the Cross Chop. And honestly, I think one Shadow Claw would have been enough damage to take them out there. 
so we do lose that game unfortunately so it's good to spot where you make mistakes and how you could have played it differently but into the next battle we see a shadow magneton very spicy actually glassier than all of my pokemon with that shadow bonus but i'm going to be able to fully shadow claw farm them down so i go for an ice punch here unfortunately throwing on alignment so they get a full dragon tail through and then once again throwing on alignment here i wasn't sure i'd survive that dragon tail turns out i did so unfortunately that looks like a pretty bad play from me but honestly it won't make too much of a difference here we still have to go for our own dragon claw to take out this hakamoto so it doesn't make too much of a difference we go for the dragon claw we take them out all shields are now down we swap into the machoke here and this is still going to be a bit tricky i'm expecting them to try and make a catch at some point so i'm just going to continue to over farm the opponent does go for the catch we get the farm down and now we can go for the return return from this range will easily take out the vigoroth and we take that game so GG's to that opponent there and into the final battle of the video, we lead Haunter into Dragonair, gonna instantly swap into my Fracture, the opponent is staying in and unfortunately they do outpace us because of that one turn to swap out, so they get off an Aquatel, we go straight for a Night Slash, expecting some something else to come in, they come in with Dusclops, we get the boost! But unfortunately, it doesn't matter there as they're able to farm us down just as we got the energy to get to another charge move. And now I'm going to shield here, hoping I can farm them down before they make back-to-back -back moves. They're running Shadow Punch, but we do barely get the farm down. And now they come in with the Dragonair. We get the farm down here, expecting Vigoroth in the back. It is Vigoroth in the back. And honestly, I think I should have swapped out instantly to make sure I got off as much karate chop damage as possible as that is the main source of damage here as i expect they will of course be shielding any cross shops i throw and ice punch doesn't do too much damage so we go for the cross shop the opponent will make it to another body slam in time so if we swapped out instantly we would have made it to back to back cross shops already and dealt more damage with those karate chops than the double resisted shadow claws we go for an ice punch here not quite at the back to back and we don't quite take them out either so unfortunately body slam does take out the haunter and we do lose that game so that's gonna be it for today's video probably gonna be the only evolution cup video i make using my own battles but we'll see if anyone does submit some very spicy battles for me to shoutcast later this week but if you did enjoy the video make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video and with that being said let's get into the shout outs from my previous video so firstly we got Todd a dude who says it's Oxford you any day for me spice and sporting comedy commentary all in one place and honestly yeah Oxford you has a very sort of unique commentary but also does run a lot of very spicy teams and is a very enjoyable watch next we got Ty Whitson who says Jamie Finn is a gig let's see and yeah, Jamie Finn, obviously the triple shadow master. Sometimes he does run sort of meta shadow Pokemon, but when he does go full spice, those videos are absolutely insane. Next, we got Sankalp Guy Roller. He says, rise to the occasion. His spicy Saturday videos are always a great banger with his incredible commentary. Love his spice content. And I think the spicy Saturdays was such a great idea. It is usually him shoutcasting battles. So not typically his own battles, but still very entertaining. And honestly, I think rise to the occasion just put his personality is just so great to watch like even if the battles aren't even that great i just find his content so funny it'll just make a random comment here and there that'll just take me off guard and yeah just very enjoyable content and finally we've got james campbell who says pokey ak battles with a ton of spicy pokemon and i know he is a bit of a controversial figure in the pokemon go community but there's no denying that he does run a lot of spicy pokemon and as for my opinion i'm gonna go for a bit of an underrated choice in chillis fm i think most of his teams are like not super spicy but they will focus on pokemon that aren't used an awful lot but they do have a lot of play up against the current meta but from time to time he does run some absolutely outrageously spicy teams and i remember the first time i tuned into one of his streams he was running a very spicy double fire team in the open ultra league 
and it wasn't really working out so I said to him you need to run more fire just run triple fire and see how it goes and he ended up going on a 9 and 1 run I'm pretty sure with like Darmanitan, Chandelure and Shadow Arcanine in the open ultra league a very high elo as well and those were some of the craziest battles I think I've ever seen so yeah Chillis of them when he does run spice he goes all in and some of the battles are just ridiculous. So with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.